everyone, and welcome to the video lecture, Introduction to the ICF and OTPF4. My name is Melissa Kay, and this is Occupational Therapy 212, Development Through the Lifespan. Let's get started. Before we jump into these two documents, the ICF and the OTPF-4, we're going to talk just briefly about occupation, seeing as that is the core of our profession and the cornerstone from which we jump off into everything else. Now, in the OTPF-4, in Table 2, uh, occupation is defined as follows. They are the everyday activities that people do as individuals, in families, and with communities to occupy time and bring meaning and purpose to life. Occupations include the things people need to, want to, and are expected to do. And that's actually from the World Federation of OT, uh, which was published in 212, this statement. There are a lot of different uh, definitions of occupation, as you will see, and if you access the presenter notes, you can see a bunch of different definitions of occupation. And part of our work this semester is going to be looking at all of these different definitions to see how they fit with uh, people from various phases of the lifespan. OT has some core beliefs that I want to share with you, and this quote kind of summarizes it. All people need to be able to be enabled to engage in the occupations of their need and choice, to grow through what they do, and to experience independence or interdependence, equality, participation, security, health, and well-being. That's from Wilcock and Townsend, 2008. Another one of the sticky issues that we're going to be addressing this semester on and off is what is occupational therapy? It's a question that is asked of us very frequently when we're out in the world. And during this semester, we're going to be exploring the answer to that, both a, a global kind of explanation and for you, a more personal kind of explanation. I've included some different definitions of occupational therapy from dictionaries and uh, online sources, but I want you to start thinking about if somebody asks you what is OT, what's your answer going to be? Uh, I'll give you a little bit of insight into my answer, which is I've spent my career primarily working in pediatrics. And so when someone asks me about OT, I direct them into my area of practice. So I say, you know, there's a lot of o different kinds of OTs. We work with people throughout the lifespan uh, at all ages and stages of development. But in my particular specialty, I work with children. And I work with children who have a range of either conditions, disabilities, diagnoses, and uh, for that reason, cannot do the things that kids normally can do. And and so OT helps with those motor skills, with uh, sensory skills, with play, with getting ready to go to school. So I give, an ex I give an example that has to do with my particular area of practice and also includes examples. So motor skills could be things like running and jumping and climbing on a playground. Fine motor skills could include things like drawing or writing or eating with a fork or cutting with scissors. So when we make our definition more specific, it enables uh, an outside audience to actually relate more to what we're talking about. Something for you to think about. You don't need to do it my way, um, but that's how I've addressed this issue over the past uh, 20 plus years of being in the field. All right, and then we ask the question, what is occupational science? And Zemke and Clark, 1996, say, occupational science is a discipline devoted to the study of occupation, informs occupational therapy practice by expanding the understanding of occupation. So the occupational science is kind of the academic piece of the understanding of occupation. All right, so let's get to our core documents. We have two, and we're going to talk about them separately. 
First, we're going to talk about the ICF, which is put out by the World Health Organization. So it's not an American document. It's not a, uh, a North American document. It's an international document. And it is stands for the International Classification of Functioning, Disability, and Health. And it's a document that we reference when we want to describe how our clients are doing in terms of their functioning, their health and states of disability. The other document that we're going to be looking at is called the OTPF4. That stands for the Occupational Therapy Practice Framework 4th Edition. Now this document, obviously 4th Edition, has gone through a number of changes and the 4th Edition is just coming out in 2020. So when I'm talking about the uh, OTPF4, I'm talking about a document that's brand new. You'll see as we go through the, um, the lecture that um, some of the pieces haven't even come out in print yet. And so we'll be using the, the reference material that we have and uh, throughout your career as a student here at SJSU uh, in occupational therapy, you're going to be referencing this document. So my recommendation is to download it for yourself. And when it comes out in print, if you're a hard copy book type person, that you actually purchase a copy. It's going to be super helpful for you throughout all of your classes in the program. All right, so let's get started with the ICF first.